The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين أستاذ العزيز دكتور so with regards to the early days of Islam so we've discussed that the Quraysh have made numerous attempts to stop the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم either by bribing and when they saw bribing would not help either by force now Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam slowly slowly the numbers of the Muslims kept increasing people would come and embrace Islam because they would listen to him and what he had to say and uh, nothing of what he said contradicted uh, logic and reason now what what I'd like to know is in detail with regards to the persecution of the Muslims and the struggles and the hardships they had to go before Hijrah, before the migration to Medina. Those um, years in those dark and uh, difficult years for Rasulullah, the Muslims in general, but also for Bani Hashim, um, where now what happened is that uh, Quraysh blocked every, tried to block everything from um, the Muslims. What were the events occurring at that time in history? A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi Yes, uh, when Quraysh saw that few people, more and more people were gathering, there weren't great uh, many people. What numbers you're, Probably uh, you're you talking about between 100 150. Subhanallah. Uh, not some, many. Some narrations, not more than 200. Not more than 200. So that's within the first um, 10 years? The first 10 years, yes. Okay. At, uh, until they were in Mecca. Okay. You're talking about that sort of number. Okay. Um, but at the outset, when they saw more and more pe people are coming, mm -hmm. um, they uh, started using threat mm -hmm. and um, harassment, even uh, as far as going as far as torture and killing um, uh, uh, the Muslims and most notable are uh, the parents of um, um, Ammar, Ammar ibn Yasir um, they were tortured and killed were they the first martyrs? they were the first uh, who were you know tortured if you like and killed uh, yes the first uh, so there were intense persecutions started. The mm. Quraysh waged uh, against the Muslims and um, uh, the followers of the Prophet uh, they could not accommodate um, uh, this new religion because obviously uh, it, they thought that it undermines uh, everything they stood for. Mm. Um, of course the values that they stood for were um, uh, nothing to be proud of. Um, 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 uh, worship <coughs> worshiping idols and um, the fact that women had no right or no value indeed. Um, uh, they, it is known that uh, uh, some people or it, or at least it took place frequently that uh, if they uh, if, a, if a female was born they would consider that as a disgrace and they would uh, kill her or bury her alive uh, and uh, so these are the sort of values uh, which uh, they had 
And um, of course, it's known that, for example, uh, Omar says that he, he buried his daughter um, alive uh, as part of that culture. Um, and the Prophet was against, yes, against that culture and against the sort of religion that they had. But Quraysh was having none of that. And they used um, extreme methods in order to persecute the Muslims. Um, their property and wealth were being confiscated uh, to the extent that it became so hard that the Prophet ﷺ ordered some of the Muslims um, under the leadership of uh, Ja'far al-Tayyar, what became known as Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the elder brother of Imam Ali السلام, to migrate to Ethiopia. He said there is a, a just Christian king who rules that country and you will find safe refuge there. <coughs> so he recommended that they go there and they, he ordered them that they go there and they did. Of course, we'll come and talk about that, inshallah, in, in a future episode uh, in a bit, bit more detail as to what happened. Mm. And uh, it's very, it can be very interesting. Uh, so but we, here we're trying to concentrate on the issue of um, um, the persecution that the Muslims, the early Muslims faced uh, while in Mecca uh, and the Prophet faced. <coughs> um, this persecution continued uh, until it got so bad that they were surrounded, if you like, um, if he, in the valley of Abu Talib السلام, So they pushed <coughs> all the Muslims, did they, did they force them to all live together? Yes, in, in the valley of Abu Talib السلام, okay. there was, if you like, a, an official boycott, embargo Just so I can uh, understand against the, it the Muslims and the Prophet. Geographically, <coughs> do we know where, where, where was the valley of Abu yes, Talib? Yes, it's, it's, it's well known. If you go and ask in Mecca, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Shaib Abu Talib, they, uh, it's still there. and. Would uh, be outskirts? Will, it's, no, it's within. It's, it's, um, it's in, 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 in the city of Mecca, and uh, they would point you to it, and you can people go and visit it. <coughs> and while in the, as part of that uh, embargo, the sanction against um, the early Muslims and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, no one was allowed to do, to trade with the Muslims. Okay. Um, and uh, no one was allowed to uh, even talk to them. No one was allowed to. Uh, marry them either okay uh, so they blocked them completely, completely from society was their intention to force them to leave mecca or that they just wanted to slowly just kill them they wanted to force them to gave, give up uh, on this religion ah, okay to, to abandon islam abandon islam and, and go back to uh, their traditions of the forefathers uh, of their forefathers so they wanted them to have nothing to do with Islam. Yeah. <clears throat> this is one way. Of, this is their aim. They didn't want them to, um, uh, you know, exp they didn't want to expel them from Mecca. They didn't want them to leave Mecca uh, because basically they w they had <clears throat> their mercy towards this religion and its followers, and uh, probably they thought that if they leave Mecca, yeah. they go somewhere else, then um, they will spread that, that that religion over there. So yes, no trade, no marriage. No, no, if you like, social or economic link with the, with, with the people, with the Muslims. <clears throat> and they were surrounded there. Because of that embargo, um, people couldn't get enough food to eat. Of course, with the uh, money that uh, uh, Sayyidah Khadija had, left for, had um, given to the Prophet, her entire wealth had, she had given to the Prophet, alayhi, they used that money to buy secretly if you like goods and food food stuff for the muslims in this uh, valley of abu talib were they not able to plant in the valley no no um and uh, they um they um used to buy them of course secretly and of course at um, the, the 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 food stuff that I used to buy were um, uh, highly overpriced uh, because of the situation the mm. says <coughs> but despite that the Prophet uh, وآله, used the wealth of Khadija السلام, to buy whatever food stuff they could and distribute it amongst the Muslims secretly, uh, amongst the Muslims uh, in the valley. But despite that, they couldn't get enough food. Um, uh, many Muslims died and they were buried and, uh, in that valley. Uh, 
and notable amongst them uh, was Sayyidah Khadija um, and Abu Talib. So first Abu Talib died and then Sayyidah Khadija died. And this was a, a massive blow mm. um, uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of his biggest uh, supporters from they one are, side, they Abu were Talib, the, exactly. and then from the other, his <coughs> wife, Sayyidah Khadija, passing away. That must Abu have Talib been was, uh, if you like, um, <coughs> a shield mm. for the Prophet against Quraysh. No one cared uh, for the Prophet in terms of his protection. Uh, and his proactive endeavor um, to make sure uh, the Prophet is saved like Abu Talib did. It is well known that while in the valley, Fi Shab Abu Talib, in the valley of Abu Talib, uh, uh, they spend very long time there, um, oh, years. Yes. Uh, and the, at night, Abu, Abu Talib was concerned that he, the Prophet may be uh, harmed or even killed uh, by assassins um, during the night when he sleep. So he used to keep vigil, Abu Talib, and he used to get his sons to sleep in the place of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. SubhanAllah. So that so the famous incident with Amir al muminin Now salam. we'll we'll come to that. Okay, so that it's been repeated in the past. Uh, yes, if you like, some. Okay, we we'll come to the the Prophet uh, Abu Talib alayhi salam used to place his sons, which shows make them, how important yes, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam make was make them for. sleep in 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 the place. Mm. For example, for a couple of hours, the Prophet was sleeping. Then the Prophet he would wake up the Prophet, make someone else, one of his sons, to sleep in his place. So that if, if they are um, monitoring um, the Prophet ﷺ, and if they want to do any harm, at least the harm will come to his sons rather than to the Prophet ﷺ. This was Abu Talib um, And that on um, daily basis or nightly basis, the Prophet uh, Abu Talib ﷺ was very concerned for the well-being of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, the Prophet died. Uh, sorry, the Abu Talib died, and then Khadija. Forty-five days later, Khadija said, the Khadija. Forty-five Alim, days later, forty-five days. Abu Talib is said to have uh, died on the twenty-sixth of Rajab, okay. and uh, of year ten of uh, after uh, Mabath, mm. and um, say the Khadija died on the tenth of Ramadan, year ten, on the same year. Abu Talib twenty-sixth of Rajab, and say the Khadija. Uh, 10th of Ramadan, that makes it about 45 days, plus or minus one day, uh, makes it about 45 days after the death of Abu Talib, Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam dies. And um, this was a, a huge blow for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa not only uh, emotionally, he, he loved them both uh, dearly, uh, but also in terms of support. They were the most loyal uh, of uh, uh, um, of the people around him, alongside people like uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam. And, um, and he was um, very saddened um, to the extent that people were worried about the well-being of the Prophet, given the sadness that he showed. That's why they called the uh, Amal Huz the year of sorrows, uh, in the year that uh, the Prophet uh, uh, lost his uh, uh, loyal uncle and his loyal wife alayhi salam. Um, so this was uh, a big blow. And of course, it was later on, um, the Muslims, as I said, many, many, many other Muslims had died uh, in, in the Valley of Abtal, and they were buried there. And the graves are um, people, when they recite Fatiha, if you like, when they visit the valley, the Shab of Abu Talib, alayhi <coughs> salam. Um, this, um, after this, it comes um, to the stage when um, uh, Archangel Jibreel uh, uh, descends on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says that your uh, protector and loyal supporter uh, uh, Abu Talib 
and uh, your devout uh, uh, supporters, Sayyidah Khadija Ali, they have died. You've lost your supporters here. It's time for you to migrate um, uh, to Medina. Um, before we can mention this, as part of um, while they were up before this boycott and, and also afterwards, the Prophet ﷺ met people from um, Medina who had embraced Islam and uh, they had invited him uh, that they would show him support if he goes there. So um, I'm being very briefed in here. So the Prophet ﷺ, on instruction from Allah Taala, planned for his uh, departure of um, uh, uh, depart, for his plan to depart Mecca and head for Medina, which inshallah we'll talk about the Hijra uh, at least uh, uh, from the time that he left um, Medina, uh, he left Mecca for Medina, and the fact that uh, he placed, just as Abu Talib used to do, he placed um, us, Imam Ali alayhi salam, to sleep in his place, mm. okay, as a decoy, if you like, so that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi can. Um, uh, leave uh, Mecca safely and head for Medina, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll talk about this um, in the next episode, inshallah. And we have hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, who says um, that uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, he is engaged in jihad fi ard al-Habash, uh, doing jihad for Allah in the uh, land of uh, Abyssinia. He was conveying the teachings of Islam to them, the message of Islam to them, and inviting them to embrace Islam, which, in which he was very successful.